Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back to Tenora High School. Rams still a lot of work to do, trailing 6-1 to one as they come to the plate here in the fourth, middle part of the lineup. Ward, Shoblin, and Harris to face Espinoza, Owen Espinoza. Three innings pitch. He's got 48 pitches, and he has 30 strikes, and he has, we said, with a strong wind and the chilly temperatures, usually you have a you know, slick ball, and you don't really get a good grip on it, but Espinoza has got his breaking ball working here on the Saturday afternoon. Pitch by Ward, fouled right back. Strike one to Tarrant. Ward singled in the first. No balls and one strike. Pitch breaking ball just misses on the inside corner. One ball and one strike. Base is empty. Nobody out. As the Rams bat here in the bottom of inning number four, trailing six to one. Espinoza winds it up. Breaking ball. Wow. Strike two called. Espinoza kind of reminds me of get to that after this pitch. One, two pitch coming. Another breaking ball. Tap shortstop side. Wolf up with the off balance throw over in time to get Ward. Nice play again by Blake Wolf. It's short to retire. Karen Ward. 6-3 on the put out. First out. The Rams presses way back in their final four years. 2011 or 12, they faced, I believe, Minster in the semifinals as Alex Shoblin steps in. Or actually, no. It's, we have a pinch hitter. Or Connor Wolfram actually was in the field last inning. In right field, and Luke Harris came in to play second base, which both John and Bridget told me that, but in my old age, I forget stuff. Espinosa's pitch. Strike. Ooh, he raised his arm. He just did a follow through. One ball, one strike, one out. Base is empty. Get to my story here in a second. Espinosa working quickly. 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two called. I believe it was Minster, the Rams facing the semifinal, and they threw out this junk ball pitcher. And back then, you're thinking the Rams, who were probably averaging close to 10 runs a game, are just going to shell this kid. Oh, Tapper Wolf comes in. Bobbles it. Can't make a play. Now batting number one, Luke Harris. So Wolfram reaches on the air. E6. Bring up Luke Harris. Harris started in right, moved to second last inning, struck out swinging in the second. And of course, this Minster kid goes on the shout out to Rams. Like I said, during pregame warm ups, you're watching this kid, you're like, gosh, they're just going to shell this dude. Uh, and of course, the reverse. Oh, Wolfram almost picked off at first. Espinosa quick fired over there. Shadle put the tag on him. And <laughs> Shadle thought he had him. Wolfram just snuck back in there. Just ahead of the tag. Per the umpire, that is. Espinosa comes set. Pitch to Harris is low. Gets away from Blaine Ford. Down to second base goes Connor Wolfram. So Wolfram reaches on the air, goes to second on the wild pitch. 6 1. Rams trails a bat here in the bottom of the fourth. Two balls and no strikes to Luke Harris. Espinosa from the set looks back at the runner a second, comes to the plate. Strike called up and in on Harris. But they call a strike. Espinosa comes set. 2 1 pitch. Harris, little shallow fly ball in the center field. Trey Rubenstein cruises underneath it, puts it away for out number two. Hunter Bosselman. Hunter Bosselman's going to step to the plate. Hunter. Grounded to second, his first plate appearance. He is 0 for 1. Runner a second now. Connor Wolfram with two out as Bosselman steps in. Espinosa working from the set position. Looks back at the runner at second. Long look in, still looking. Finally comes to the plate. Inside, ball one to Rams first baseman, Hunter Bosselman. B6. 
E.J. Morlock on deck for Tenora. Espinosa asks for time and steps off. He's going to ask for his catcher, Blaine Ford, to come out with the runner a second. They may want to switch a sign up here or there. As Paul Farrell brings out some balls for the umpire. Rams won the first game, the JV game, actually. I think it was 9-2. to two. Rams with eight runs in the bottom of the sixth inning. Actually trailed 2-1 to one going into that sixth inning, and they sent 11 men to the plate. Espinosa comes set, looks at the runner. Pitch again low. Nice stop by Blaine Ford. Holding Wolfram down at second. Count to Bosselman with his two balls and no strikes. Two zero pitch coming to Hunter Bosselman. Tapper shortstop side. Wolf has it go off his glove again. No, well he throws it over, but it was too late. So second error in the inning for Blake Wolf. Wolfram holds it second. Bosselman is on at first. Rams defense left them in the third inning. They committed four errors as Napoleon plated five runs. Now back to back, I guess not back to back errors, but two errors and three batters for Blake Wolf. Send up BJ Morlock. Espinoza comes set, looks at the runners. Whirls. No throw back to second base. Connor Wolfram goes scampering back. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us on this Saturday, late afternoon now. Getting close to five o'clock. Check swing. So right now. It's a ball to BJ Morlock. Ball trickled away from Blaine Ford behind the plate. Not enough to allow the Rams runners to advance. Uh, 1-0 pitch coming from Espinosa to Morlock. Ball two. Montpelier will be here Monday. Ayersville will be here Tuesday and Thursday. Antwerp will be here. So three straight home games for the Rams. If it's a downpour and the radar shows this is a 2-0 pitch. Mm -hmm. Strike call looked to be a little high and away. Saturday, the Rams will be over at Kaleida. Now, I don't know if they're going to have seats installed over there at Kaleida. They're supposed to do it starting Monday, I believe, at the Holy Name Park. Completely redid the grandstands there. Big donation fundraiser going on over there. Strike two called on the outside corner. So Saturday... If you're planning on going to Kaleida, I would throw a couple chairs in your trunk just to be safe. Like I said, I don't. I know as of right now, there's no seats over at Kaleida. So we could have seats, or more likely we will not have seats, is my guess. 2-2 two, two pitch coming. Warlock asks for time. He steps out. Because they're playing a seventh grade game. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Rams trail 6-1, have runners at first and second. Morlock digs back in the box. Espinosa comes set, looks at Wolfram a second. Pitch to Morlock, low. Count goes full, runners will be off with the pitch. On deck, Grady Gusweiler. Espinosa was cruising coming into this inning. Two errors by his shortstop has not helped the situation. 2-2 two, two pitch to Morlock. Espinosa whirls, does not throw to second again. Second time he's done that here this inning. Bosselman at first, Connor Wolfram at second. Morlock at the plate. 3-2 pitch coming from Owen Espinosa. There go the runners, little tapper, first base side. Espinosa up with it, tags Morlock on the way by for out number three. One unassisted on the putout. For the Rams, they threaten. They do not score. For Tenora, no runs. No hits. Two errors by Napoleon. And the Rams leave 2-1 base after four innings of play here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Napoleon, six. And Tenora, 
one. We'll be back after this timeout. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Back at Sonora High School, 6-1 Wildcats with a five-run advantage as they come to bat here in the fifth. Four, five, and six. Ford, Woods, and Ellers to face Eli Plasman. Lady Rams with a 15-0 win at Lipsick earlier today. That was a 1 o'clock start. They moved that back a couple hours to let the field dry over at Lipsick. Check out the box score here and see what we got from the Lady Rams today. First pitch is called a strike. Marin Pittman had five RBIs on two hits. Anna Frazier... Had three hits and four at bats. Plasman's pitch. Pop foul. Wolfram giving chase. It's out of play. Hits the bleachers over there. Count goes to no balls and two strikes. Logan McQuillan had three hits and an RBI. Paige Gamby, who's been scorching at the plate, she's just a freshman, had two more RBIs. Skyly Zolman, two RBIs on a hit. Plasman's 0-2. Low, off of Wolfram again. One ball and two strikes to Blaine Ford. Kylie Zolman got the win. I believe that's her tenth win. Swung on, pop first base side foul. Dalton Wolfram throws the mask off. Goes over there, puts it away for out number one to retire Blaine Ford in foul territory. Skyly Zolman, five innings is pitched. Struck out 13 and walked two. Did not allow a run or a hit. So a five inning no hitter by Skyly Zolman today. 13 strikeouts out of 15. Out of 15 outs. Or 18 outs. Out of 18 outs, Skyly had 13 via strikeouts. Plasman's first pitch to Parker Woods is hit into shallow right field. Connor Wolfram out there puts it away for out number two. Again, last inning, Wolfram came in the game in right field for Harris. Harris came in to play second base for Shoblin. 6-1 Napoleon as they bat here at the top of the fifth inning. Plasman winds it up. His pitch is outside for a ball. The point with five runs in the third, I believe those are all unearned. Ground ball to Radzik is short. He scoops it up, fires over to first base. Bosselman puts it away. The Wildcats go quickly here in the fifth for Napoleon. No runs, no hits, no ram airs, and nobody left on base. After four and a half here at Sonora High School at Groove Field, it's 6-1 Wildcats on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Rams have work to do, running out of time as they head to the bottom of the fifth inning here. They trail 6-1. Six, six runs, six hits, three errors for Napoleon for Tenora. One run, two hits, and four huge errors. Like I said, all those errors, I believe, came in that third inning when Napoleon scored five runs. I'd like to check, like, those of you who do follow Game Changer, it's always interesting to see what the opposing team scores sometimes. So for Napoleon, they have 
for Eli. Six runs. They say four of those runs are earned. So, which, like I said, I'm not sure about that, but it is what it is. Some other thing last night at Defiance, I was listening to the Defiance game with Dave Kleck and Shorty, and there was a single by Kenton, I believe, in the third or fourth inning. I think it was the third inning. And then, mysteriously, that hit got changed to an error an inning or two later, and then they wound up with a no-hitter. <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes things work in your favor, I guess. <laughs> if they say it's a single, and then a couple of innings later, it turns into an error, and then you wind up with a no-hitter. I didn't see video of it, so I have no idea. It could have been an error, or it could have been a hit. I do not know. All I know was they said it was a hit at first. Pitch inside for a ball to Grady. Grady, 0 for 1, struck out looking in the second. Espinosa winds it up. His pitch swung on, hit shortstop side. Wolf backhands it deep and throw from short. Gets by the first baseman. Gusweiler makes the turn, slides into second base. That's going to be another error on shortstop Blake Wolf. So Grady. Is on at second with nobody out. And the Rams trail by five. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier steps in. Mosier then Radzik. Oh. Espinosa breaking ball. Outside corner for a strike. He kind of abandoned that breaking ball up until that point for a few hitters. And that was the inning before the previous couple of innings. He had that thing just breaking. Steep break. Pitch to Mosier is low. Ball gets away from the catcher. Blaine Ford. Grady thought about it. Then scampered back to second base. Count to Mosier is one ball and one strike. Gus Weiler at second. Espinoza gets the sign from Ford. Looks back at Grady. Comes to the plate. Pitch to Mosier outside corner. Strike two called. The catcher's lined up out, way outside. And he hit the glove. Because he hit the glove doesn't mean the glove was in the strike zone. One, two, pitch to Mosier from Espinoza. Gus Weiler leads from second. He looks back at him. Pitch. Mosier. Lines it into left center. That falls in front of Rubenstein. He bobbles the ball. Grady stops at third. Now batting number 11, Caden Radzik. Mosier with a single here in the fifth. Plates or puts runners at first and third. With Tenora trailing by five. Going to bring up Caden Radzik. Normally, BR likes to send that runner from first down to second, but you're trailing by five with nobody out here. Sometimes you just want to put the ball in the hands of the fielders and just let them throw it around, but we'll see what BR wants to do here with Radzik at the plate. Time out. Head coach Ed Sprague is going to come out there and have a conversation with his pitcher, Owen Espinoza. First year coach Ed Sprague for the Wildcats took over for Matt Hardy, who's still on the staff. Matt's an assistant coach for the Wildcats. Sprague under the assistant coach title for years for Tom Held at Defiance. Actually, I think he's still a teacher at Defiance, Coach Sprague is. Sprague's done. Trots back to the Wildcat dugout on the first base side. Bad choice of words. <laughs> Mosier leads from first. Gus Weiler on at third. Speed to burn on the Rams' base pass. Espinoza comes set. Erazic asks for time. Mosier with nine steals on the season. Yeah. Resnick back in the box. Pitch to Caden. Breaking ball strike. I think Sprague went out there and said, hey, kid, your breaking ball is just locking these guys up. Use it more. And the first pitch to Caden. 
did just did just that. Rezik lines it off the third baseman's glove into left field. That's going to score Grady to trim the lead to six to two. Rezik with an RBI single. Well done. Scoring was Gus Weiler from third, who reached on an error by Wolf. Down to second base is Mosier. So Radzik's on at first, Mosier's on at second. Dalton Wolfram comes to the plate. Dalton reached in the first inning on a single and scored. Espinoza's pitch, breaking ball, strike called. That curveball's a weapon. He's good yeah, I mean, it's, it's hittable. You just have to see it. 0-1 pitch coming to Dalton. Runners lead from first and second. Ball in the dirt. Nice stop by Blaine Ford. That was definitely going to move the runners up had not Ford threw his body in front of the ball. Ball ricocheted off his chest protector, kind of back towards the mound. Mosier decently down there at second. Radzik on it first. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Wolfram. Espinosa looks back at Mosier a second. Looks again. Comes set. Looks again. Pitch to Wolfram. Fouled right back. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. To the Rams catcher, number three hitter, Dalton Wolfram. Taryn Ward is on deck for Tenora. 79 pitches for Espinoza, 49 strikes. 1-2 pitch coming to Wolfram. Tapped second base side, second baseman throws over to Wolf, covering at second to force Radzik for the first out. Going down to third was Aiden Mosier, so Radzik is out number one at second. Wolfram is on at first on the fielder's choice. It was four to six on the put out at second as Wolf came across the bag, did not throw over to first. No. Six two now. Runners at the corners with one out now. Espinosa throws over to first base. Wolfram back safely. Don't aim, don't aim stand out there that long. Pittsburgh Sue checks in. We got to see Pittsburgh Sue on Thursday. She stopped up. Saw us up here in the press box. Usually see, we usually see Sue during baseball season once and then during football season. <coughs> Pitch coming to Ward. Espinoza comes set. Comes to the plate. Outside ball one. <coughs> Connor Wolfram on deck. Replaced Alex Shoblin two innings ago. <sighs> Breaking ball inside corner. Strike call to Taryn Ward. Count evens one ball, one strike, one out. Come on. Rams with a single run in the first and one so far here in the fifth. They're threatening to add more. They have runners at the corners with one out. Ward at the dish. Espinoza. Still on the hill for the Wildcats. 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside, oh. off the glove of the catcher. It goes, Blaine Ford. Scoring is Mosier. Down the third base goes go. Dalton Wolfram. Rams have cut it to 6-3. to three. And that may, we'll see, keep an eye on the dugout. I don't see Coach Sprague pop out yet. The other run in now. Still one out here. 2-1 two, one, two, two, one is the count to Taryn Ward. Dalton Wolfram at third. Espinoza. Steps off the mountain. Ward asks for time. And we'll redo everything again. Rams with two here. Cut up to six to three. Be nice to get that run in from third with one out. Pitch to Ward. Up and in. Ball three. This is probably the last batter we'll see Espinoza face. 83 pitches for Owen. He's got 51 strikes. 
Pitch to Ward. Up and in. Throw down to third base. Way off the line. Nice save down there by Parker Woods. That was ticketed for right field. So Ward trots down to first base on the walk. Again, Rams with runners at the corner with one out. Still no... No action in the bullpen down there for the Wildcats. And Sprague is going to stay with Espinosa. At least do one more batter. Connor Wolfram steps in. Reached on the air last inning. Steps out. Asks for time again. Ward at first. Wolfram. Dalton the Wolfram at third. Connor Wolfram at the plate. Pitch to Connor. Breaking ball. Breaks outside. Somebody's heading down there, John says, to get warmed up. Espinosa's 1-0 to Connor. Inside ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Connor Wolfram. And on a chilly day like today, you're not going to get warmed up in about 10, 12 pitches. Big gap, Connor. Throw over. Ward's back Connor. safely. Rams with two here in the fifth to cut it to six to three. Shoot it out there. Starting to add more with runners at the corners with just one out. Connor Wolfram head on the count. Two balls and no strikes. Espinosa's kind of a cat and mouse game here this inning. I think Espinosa's a little frustrated. Rams ask for time. All step right. out. Espinosa gets on the mound. He's ready to go. Rams step out. 2-0 pitch coming to Connor. Strike called. Game was kind of crawled. Come to a crawl here in the last inning. Little hit now. 2 1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Said the wind has severely died down to probably 10, 12 miles an hour. It was up to 20, 25 there for a couple innings. It was just miserable. 2 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Down goes Connor Wolfram on strikes for out number two. That's a huge strikeout for Espinoza, leaving that runner stranded at third with one out. Two outs now as Luke Harris steps in. Got Ward at first and Dalton Wolfram at third. Harris, Luke, 0 for 2, struck out in the second. Flew out to Rubenstein in the center in the fourth. First pitch to Luke. Breaking ball. Strike called. Espinosa, long look in, gets the sign from Ford. His 0-1 coming. Swung on and missed. Harris went fishing on that breaking ball that broke into the left-handed batter's box. <laughs> 0 2 pitch to Harris, breaking ball, tap foul. Harris just got a piece of it as he sent it towards the Rams dugout. Darren Ward on at first for Tenora. Dalton Wolfram at third. Two outs now. Tenora with two here in the fifth. Trail six to three as we approach the five o'clock hour. Espinosa's pitch. Strike. Whoa, didn't get the call. The Rams are going to steal a run. Ward goes down to second. The throw goes into center field. Dar Dalton Wolfram darts in from third. To score the third run of the inning. That's the fourth total run for the Rams. They trail six to four. Oh, that last one? That was out. I think the Wildcats kind of fell asleep there. Ward or Ford threw the ball down to second base and it sailed way over the head of the infielder and went into center field. Down to third. Race Terran Ward. So Ward's a third now. One two pitch to Harris. Harris swings and misses. Ball gets away from the catcher. He throws down the first base in time to retire Harris. Good inning, fellas. Harris struck out, but was put out 2-3 as the ball trickled away. Rams send seven batters to the plate. They score four runs, and they do so on just two hits. One more error for the Napoleon Wildcats, and the Rams leave one on base at third. After five innings of play here at Groove Field at Sonora High School, it is Napoleon 6 and Sonora 4 on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. 
Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes! Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain-sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Rams added three there in the fifth. They cut the Napoleon lead to six to four as Napoleon heads to bat here in the top of the sixth inning. Seven, eight, nine. Shadow Bickle and Espinosa scheduled to pitch against Eli Plasma. Plasma <laughs> pitched pretty well. He said his defense uh, took the inning off there in the third when they played at five. First pitch is a ball for your Lady Wildcats softball team. Played at Fairview. Played a doubleheader over there today. Short stop side, Razik fields it, throws over in time to retire Shadle. 6 3 on the put out for out number one. Shadle was 0 for 2. He's now 0 for 3. First game was 3 to 1, Fairview with the victory, and game two was 6 to 4, 6 to 3. Game one was 4 to 1, Fairview with the win, and game two was 6 to 3, Fairview with the win over Napoleon. So the Lady Wildcats definitely gave the uh, Lady Apaches a little battle there. I don't think Fairview's lost a game this year in softball. First pitch is a strike to Kel Bickle. Bickle, your DH is over two. Pitch is outside. One ball, one strike, one out here in the top of the sixth inning. Rams trail by two, now six to four for Plasman. Approaching 80 pitches. Pitches swung on just inside the line. In right field, Mosier comes over, but not before Bickle checks up with a standing double. Now batting number 21. 77 pitches for Eli. He's got 48 strikes. We said on a chilly day like today, especially when Eli was out there in that gale force wind. Like the wind had to have been blowing 25, 30 miles an hour, and it was already chilly. He must have a hand warmer in his back pocket, I assume Eli does. When he gets a chance, he'll put his hand back there, kind of warm up his fingertips. Owen Espinoza steps in, the number nine hitter. Walked and scored in that disastrous third inning for the Rams. And grounded to Terran Ward at third in the fourth. Pitches swung on and fouled off first base side out of play. No balls and one strike. One out, runner at second for the Wildcats. That's Kel Bickle with a one-out double. Top of the lineup on deck, Devin Dietrich. Plasma's pitch is high. One ball, one strike, one out. And the Cats, top of the sixth. Supposed to be a Napoleon home game. Turned into a Tenor home game. Pitch swung on, grounded shortstop side. Radzik scoops it up. Long throw over to Bosselman in time to retire Espinoza. 6-3 on a put out for out number two. Top of the lineup moving over to third base was Kel Bickle on the ground ball. Devin Dietrich steps in. Dietrich is one for three with his single scored a run in the third. He said, go back to that third inning that Eli actually appeared to have the leadoff hitter struck out. And he wound up reaching. First pitch is a ball. Thank you, John. Dropped my pen and went all the way against the wall. I tried to scoop it off with my foot. <laughs> John's John to the rescue. 
Runner leads away from third. Plasma's pitch. Ground ball. <laughs> Scooped up by Taryn Ward. Taryn with a look what I found. I win a prize here at the carnival. Ward fires over to first base to get Devin Dietrich. Kind of the old Ole. Look what I have in my glove. 5 3 on a put out for the third out in the inning for Napoleon. No runs. One hit, no ram errors. The Wildcats leave one after five and a half here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Wildcats still lead Tenora by a score of six to four. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Back at Sonora High School, 6-4. Cats lead by two. Would say send you over to Postuma accounting firm, but if you're taking your taxes over to them now, I would assume you missed your April 17th deadline and you had filed an extension. So if you filed your extension, you could still take your taxes over to Postuma. If you missed your extension, you probably still can take your taxes to Postuma, but you may have to pay just a, a, a tiny fine for submitting your taxes late from the April 17th deadline this year. Usually it's April 15th, but I think the deadline was Tuesday this season due to the Easter holiday, it's my guess. First pitch is outside, ball one. Second pitch from Espinosa is up and in. Off the glove of Ford. Two balls and no strikes to Hunter Bosselman. Crowded the second in the second and reached on an error in the fourth. Bosselman swings and fouls it at the plate. Strike one. Blake Wolf with two errors that inning in the fourth for Napoleon. Tried to give some back. The Ram had four errors in the fifth, or four errors in the third. Espinosa winds it up. His 2 1 pitch to Bossom and outside corner strike two called. Six runs, seven hits, five errors for Napoleon for Tenora. Four runs, four hits, and four errors for the Rams. 2 2 pitch outside. Count goes full at three and two. Mr. Doug Plasman listening down in Nashville, Tennessee, I believe. Full count pitch. Swung on. Hit right back to Espinosa. He snags it. Throws it over to first base to Shadle to retire Bosselman for out number one. Bosselman hit it hard. One hopper right back to Espinosa. Foot right or left. Be possible single there, but. Espinosa field his position. And we got BJ Morlock here in the bottom of the sixth. Breaking ball stays high off the glove of Ford to the backstop. It goes. 6 4 Cats. One out for the Rams here in the bottom of the sixth. Nobody on. Espinosa's 1 0 pitch swung on, fouled right. Back and it missed us. Landed behind us. How do you know that? You want to hear a th big thud. And it hit our roof. One ball, one strike, one out. Espinosa winds it up. Pitch to Morlock. Breaking ball, strike two called. For Espinosa, it's allowed four hits, four runs, no earned runs, struck out six and walked one. Breaking ball hit right back at Espinosa again. He fields it. Fires Morlock out at first base. So back to back, one three put out. Brady Gusweiler steps in. Ram center fielder. Struck out looking in the second. Reached on an error in the fifth and scored a run. Top of the lineup on deck, Aiden Mosier. Gusweiler 
Jr. bats from the right side of the plate. Espinosa's pitch to Grady. Outside corner, strike one called. That must have caught the front of the plate because the time it got to the catcher's glove was about six or eight inches outside. That one's low. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Two outs, nobody on. We said the wind has considerably died down here at Sonora. Went through two innings of just unbearable conditions out there for the boys. Grady smashes it in the gap. Going over to cut it off is Dietrich. He's going to hold Gus Weiler with for a long single. Grady, big turn. Heads back to first base. Hayden Mosher is going to dig in for the Rams. He singled and scored in the fifth. He is one for three. Flew out to Rubenstein in the first and grounded to Blake Wolf in the third. Timeout. Coach Ed Sprague going to head out there and talk to Espinoza, and that could be it for Espinoza. He's over, a, he's at 107 pitches right now, so that's probably it for Espinoza. And that's it. So we'll have the pitching change and all the changes right after this. 6 4. Rams trail by two. They have a runner at first. Grady Gusweiler, Mosier will be at the dish after the pitching change right after this. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Todora Rams Live. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273, and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Coach Bragg is going to summons Luke Hardy. Hardy, six and a third innings pitch so far this season. He's appeared in three games, all in relief. He's allowed one hit, struck out four, has not walked anybody, has not allowed a run, earned or not earned. He's faced 19 batters. ERA of 0, 0.00. He has a win and a save. To Luke Hardy will be your new pitcher for Napoleon here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Two outs. Rams have a runner on first. Gives you the line for Espinosa. Five and two thirds for Owen. Pitched pretty effectively, honestly. Had a raking ball, was working rather nice. Allowed five hits, four runs, no earned runs, struck out six Rams, and walked just one. He is responsible for the runner on at first. That's Grady Gusweiler, who reached on a single. Mosier steps in, as we said. Aiden is one for three, singled and scored in the Rams' three-run fifth inning. They trail six to four as they bat with two outs here. Gusweiler always a threat to steal. Checks up, leads off, decent lead by Grady. There he goes. Mosier takes the pitch, strike called, throw down, not in time. Grady hangs on to the bag. I think he hung on to the bag. He's safe, says the umpire. So Grady with the stolen base by the just the fingertips, he hung on to the base down there in second. As we discussed during the JV game a couple times with the wet surface here. You just slide right by the base. I'm probably reacting like you got yeah, it. Yeah, the hell to right. oh, pitch coming to Mosier from Hardy. Hardy from the set. Looks back at Grady at second. Looks again. Comes to the plate. Swung on and missed. Right two to Mosier. Go in. Keep your head in there. Throw back. Gets away from Hardy. 
scooped up by the second baseman, Bryce Bosselman. As far as we know, there was no other changes other than Espinosa exiting and Hardy entering. Hardy, long look in, gets a sign from Ford, still looking in. Mosier asks for time, he steps out. Good, good. We need hits, so if, if you don't have any runners on, then don't do any good. Hardy still on the rubber, pitches from the first base side of the mound. 0-2 pitch coming from Hardy to Mosier, way outside. Ball one, one ball, two strikes, two outs to Mosier. <laughs> Gus Weiler on his second, single and stole the base. Hardy shakes off Ford. Mosher steps out. <laughs> We've seen the Rams do this quite a bit the last couple of innings. I think that's kind of what frustrated Espinosa last inning. Back on the mound, one, two pitch from Hardy. Tap first base side foul. Battle. Gus Weiler trots back to second. Mosier going to go back into the box at first. 6-4 here in the bottom of the six. Cats with a two-run lead. Come on. It's shortstop side, shortstop up with it. Throw over just in time to get Mosier. Mosier speeding down the bag at first, out by half a step for out number three. Six three on the put out. Rams threaten, do not score. No runs, one hit, no errors. Tenora leaves a runner on base after six innings of play here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Wildcats and Napoleon six, and your Tenora Rams four on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 576-6894. Back here at Sonora. Actually, that was Owen Espinoza at short. Espinoza went from the mound to shortstop. Blake Wolf went from short to first. Shadle exited the game when Luke Hardy came on the pitch and get the final out. Huge out there to retire Mosier. Adding for the for three, Napoleon, two, three, and four, Trey Rubenstein. Rubenstein's been a stat stuffer today. Doubled and scored in the first, singled and scored in the third, and had a bunt single in the fourth and a stolen base. Rubenstein, Wolf and Ford to face Eli Plasma. And we said Eli pitched pretty effectively outside of that third inning disaster. First pitch is a ball. Checking on Eli's numbers. 83 pitches, 52 strikes through six innings. First pitch, or second pitch is called a strike. Count evens, one ball and one strike. Seventh inning here, Rams trail by two. 6-4. Plasman winds it up. Pitch swung on and missed. Strike two to Trey Rubenstein. Rubenstein came in hitting 349. Plasman. Just misses the outside corner. His 2 2 pitch fouled off. I guess it comes back. It is in foul territory now. Connor Wolfram over there to put it away for out number one. Now batting number seven, Blake Wolf. Gonna bring up. Blake Wolf. Nice running catch out there by Connor Wolfram. Blake Wolf had an RBI single in the first, an RBI single in the third. First pitch 
to Blake Wolf from Plasman as a ball. Struck out in the fourth. Plasman winds it up. His pitch, breaking ball in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Oh, no. Wings on it, drives in the gap in right center field. Wolfram's not going to get that at one hops the wall. Connor picks it up, but not before Blake Wolf's in with a stand-up double. That's the third hit for Wolf. Three for four for Blake. Shortstop, Blaine Ford's going to step in. Blaine is 0 for 3. The fly out in the first. Ground into a double play in the third and popped out the plasma in the fifth. 90 pitches for Eli, 55 strikes. With one out here in the seventh. He comes set, Plasman's pitch swung on. Shallow fly ball. Harris goes out at second, puts it away in front of Connor Wolfram for out number two. Nice play by Luke Harris, who started in right. Came in to play for Alex Shoblin, I believe, in the third inning. Two outs now, runner at second base. Parker Woods digs in. Woods is one for three with a single and a run scored in the third. Blasman sets, looks back at the runner at second, comes to the plate outside, just misses the outside corner, ball one. Approaching 530 here at Sonora High School. Game close to two hours old. That pitch is outside, ball two. For the Rams, providing they hold on to the 6-4 deficit, we'll have two, three, and four. Radzik, Wolfram, and Ward. Timeout as Dalton Wolfram with the runner at second base going to head out there and maybe switch up a sign or two with Blake Wolf down there at second. Wolf going to go down and talk to his third base coach, his head coach, Matt Hardy. Or not Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy was a coach last year. Ed Sprague. <laughs> First year coach, Ed Sprague for Napoleon. Took over for Matt Hardy. Two balls and no strikes to Parker Woods, who digs back in. Pitch is outside ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Parker Woods. Zach Eller's on deck for the Cats. Plasma looks back at Wolf a second. His 3-0, that's a bullseye. Called a strike. 3-1. 6-4, Napoleon. Runner at second. Two outs here. 3-1 pitch from Plasma to Woods. Swung on. Skied on the infield. Plasma calls it out. Ward calls him off. Tiran struggles with a strong win here. Puts it away. For out number three, retiring Woods on a fly ball unassisted to the third baseman. In the inning for Napoleon, no runs, one hit, no ram errors, and one left on base. Napoleon has left five on through seven innings. As we head to the seventh inning, bottom of the seventh inning here at Tenora High School's group field, Cats still leading Tenora six to four. We'll be back with the final inning and hope for a Rams victory right after this time out. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419 419- 428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Bottom of the seventh inning coming up here at Tenora High School. Rams have some work to do. They trail six to four. Said the meter of their order, Radzik Wolfram Ward, another Wolfram called Shoblin exited. Harris, Bosselman, and Morlock 
will be your batters here in the bottom of the seventh inning to face Luke Hardy. Hardy came in in relief last inning, got the final out for Owen Espinoza. Rams had a runner at first with two outs. Each team scored a run in the first. The point with five runs in the third. We said that was just a weather-wise and Rams defense-wise an inning that they would like to forget. The wind's just gusting and howling here. Like a scene from a, a thriller. Winds have since died down considerably. I mean, this flag is still out there blowing rather stiff, but nothing like it was there in the third and fourth innings. Six runs, eight hits, five errors for Napoleon. Four runs, five hits, four errors for the Rams. And the Rams, we said the Rams come in at all four errors there in that fifth inning. Radzik steps in. Caden had an RBI single his last plate appearance, otherwise has struck out his previous two at-bats. First pitch by Hardy is a strike. Hardy already has a save to his credit this year. First pitch is a strike to Caden Radzik. Hardy shakes off Blaine Ford, gets the sign he wants, winds it up. His 0-1 pitch inside corner, strike two called. Inside pitch. So Hardy quickly ahead of Radzik. No balls and two strikes. Taron Ward, or Dalton Wolfram on deck for the Rams. Hardy's 0-2. Swung on, fouled off first base side. Out of play. Hardy gets back on top of the mound. His 0-2 pitch coming to Caden Radzik. Winds it up. Breaking balls low. One ball and two strikes to Caden Radzik. Luke Hardy, a junior, throws from the right side. Getting shakes off his catcher. Now gets the sign he wants his 1-2 pitch. That's low to the backstop. It goes. Hardy fell down on his follow through. Big smile on his face. Two balls and two strikes to Caden. Now the wind starts to pick up again. Like strong here at Tenor High. It's been blowing pretty stiff, but every now and then this just gets wicked. Radzik lines it to center field. Rubenstein cruises over in the gap and puts it away. You couldn't hit the bar ball any harder than Caden just did. Unfortunately, with the speed of Rubenstein, he glided over and put it away for out number one. Dalton Wolfram's going to check in. Wolfram at the plate. Singled and scored a run in the first. Grounded to short in the third. And reached on an error and scored in the fifth. Pitch by Luke Hardy is outside. Ball one. one 0 pitch from Hardy to Dalton Wolfram. That catches the outside corner. Strike one. Hardy's 1-1 coming to Wolfram as Taron Ward awaits on deck. Breaking ball, I guess more of a fastball than a breaking ball. Looked like it was going to break, but it just rode inside on Dalton Wolfram. Ball two to Dalton. Two one pitch coming. Nice Wolfram guy. laces it into left center. Nope. Makes a big turn. He's going to try for two. Throw not in time. Wolfram with the hustle double. <laughs> there's like first. I'm like, there's no way he's going to go for second. Trailing by two, and he yep. put on the Jets. Head no, first dive. No throw on the play. Taron Ward steps in. Rams trail six four. One out. Yeah. Dalton Wolfram at second. He's serving him up, Taron. Alec Shoblin back in the on deck circle with that wind blowing out. We saw what Alec can do uh, Thursday with two solo home runs. Put the ball in the air and it's going to go. 6 4 and the point leads by two. Hardy sets. Breaking ball to Karen Ward. Catches the inside corner. Strike one. Let's go, T. Hardy looks back at Wolfram a second. 
Pitches to the plate. Breaking ball. Ward smashes and hits the umpire. That's going to be a base hit. Dead ball. Ward smashed it by the mound. Espinosa was in position to field it, and the umpire could not get out of the way. So Ward with the single. Wolfram is on at third. That's just one of those, the umpire's there. He's part of the field. And Ward just laced it off of the umpire's foot. It hit right at the base of the umpire and set there. Espinosa, all he could do was pick it up. So Shoblin comes to the plate. He's the winning run. Wind blowing out to straightaway center field now. Rams with runners at the corners with one out trailing six to four. Here at Groove Field on this Saturday late afternoon. First pitch, inside corner strike. Oh, it takes one here. Shoblin back in the box from the right side of the plate. 379 for Alec. Alec takes the pitch. One ball, one strike, one out. Runners at the corner. Runner at first means nothing right now. Can't take any chances. Taron knows that. Coach Anders emphasized that. Dalton Wolfram at third leads away. Hardy comes set. 1-1 one, one to Shoblin. Breaking ball way outside. Two balls and one strike on deck is Luke Harris for the Rams. Thanks for joining us here on Tenora Rams Live on this Saturday. Listen for Napoleon. We appreciate you and your longtime listeners, including Pittsburgh Sioux. Appreciate you guys for listening and watching as well. Hardy's 2-1 to Shoblin. Driven deep center field. Back goes Rubenstein off the fence. One. Wolfram scores. Ward checks up at second. Shoblin launched it straight away center field. One hop the wall. Scoring Dalton Wolfram. Taron Ward got the stop sign from Coach Renolette. Shoblin with a one-out double. The Rams have the winning run at second base with Luke Harris at the plate. Harris 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Last plate appearance, Luke struck out. Ball got away from the catcher and he's thrown out 2 to 3. So Harris steps in with the winning run. At second, the tying run is at third, six to five. Rams trail by one. That's the eighth hit for Tenoris. Five runs, eight hits, four errors. Hardy going to pitch from the stretch. Looks back at the runner. Infield's in. Hardy steps off. Wolf at first. Possible one at second. Espinosa at short. Parker Woods at third. Down, they're going to intentionally walk Luke Harris to load the bases. So Harris trots down the first. That's going to load him up with one out. It's actually a smart play. He's going to have a force now with any base. So Harris will load him up. Hunter Bosselman steps in. John, <laughs> John's pacing. We're going to have to put new carpet in up here. Bosselman at the plate. One out. Rams trail by one. Infield in at the corners. Back at double play depth at short and second. Hardy's going to pitch out of the stretch. First pitch to Bosselman. Breaking ball just a bit inside. Ball one. A little hit here. One ball, no strikes to Hunter Bosselman. Long look in by Luke Hardy. Rams trail by one here in the bottom of the seventh. Hardy's 1-0. Inside, ball two. No place to put Bosselman. A hit here ends it. It's call time if he takes too long. B.J. Morlock on deck, but we don't want to see B.J. Hardy's 2-0 coming. Swung on. Popped into shallow right. Right fielder comes in, puts it away. Here comes Ward. He's going to try and score. Not in time. The Rams have tied it. Bosselman with the sacrifice fly to Zach Ellers in right. Scoring was Taron Ward to tie it at six. 
Shoblin held up at second. Harris held up at first. So BJ steps to the plate. BJ now with a chance to end the game. Two on, two out. We are tied at six here at Groove Field. Harding from the stretch. Looks back at the runner. Pitch to Morlock. Check swing. Ball one. Rams with two here in the bottom of the seventh to tie it at six. Have the winning run at second and Alex Shoblin. B.J. Morlock at the plate. Hardy sets his 1-0 pitch to B.J. Breaking ball stays inside. Two balls and one strike. Grady Gusweiler on deck. Already had John wear a path in the carpet. Bridget will do the same. Here. <laughs> 2 0 pitch coming to BJ. Inside! Almost hit him. He spun out of the way. Teammates are saying wear it down there, but anybody that has been in the batter's box doesn't want to wear an 80 mile an hour fastball around your neck. 3 0 pitch from Hardy. High and away, that's going to load him up. Walk to Morlock. Shoblin down to third. Harris down to second. Morlock down to first. Grady Gusweiler to the plate. Coach Matt Hardy is going to come out and have a conversation with his relief pitcher, Luke. Hardy, Ed Sprague. Ed Sprague, I keep saying Matt Hardy. Luke Hardy, or Luke Hardy. Ed Sprague is going to go out and have a conversation with Luke Hardy. Matt was a coach last year. In previous years is why I continually say that. But Ed Sprague. I think actually it was Matt Hardy, honestly. I think he's a pitching coach. So that was Matt. So technically I was right. Bases full of Rams, tied at six here in the bottom of the seventh. Wild pitch wins the game here. Bridget's all right with that, she says. Breaking ball inside. Ball one. No place to put Grady. Rams have fought all the way back from a 6-1 to deficit to tie it at six. Hardy from the set. 1-0 pitch to Grady. Strike one called. That's right. Only takes one. Only takes one. Coach Renolette. Down at third. Shouting encouragement. Gus Weiler digs in from the right side. 1-1 one, one pitch. Way outside. A nice backhanded stop by Blaine Ford. Two balls and one strike to Grady. He doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to go three. Grady has walked five times this year. Hardy's 2-1 to Gus Weiler. Center field and it comes Rubenstein puts it away. Nice running catch by Trey Rubenstein sends it into extra innings for the Rams. They tie it with two runs here in the bottom of the seventh inning, and Sonora does so on one, two, three, three hits. No errors. Rams leave them loaded. They leave three on base. We're going to head to the eighth inning. We are tied at six here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiance Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Back at Groove Field, we are tight at 6. Told my wife we'd be home in time for the rendering reception about 5, 530. Well, she's ready to go. 
and I'm not. <laughs> and she's never ready, of course. So, <laughs> new pitcher B.J. Morlock will come on for the Rams. We'll get the line on for Eli Plasma, and he's good outside of that third disastrous inning for the Rams, which Napoleon scored five runs on four Tenor errors. Eli pitched really well. Eli pitched seven innings, allowed nine hits, six runs. This is a Napoleon game changer. They say four earned runs. One strikeout and one walk for Eli. So very effective performance by Eli. Rams tied it up at six. Eli cannot win it or lose it. Not that he's out of the game, but B.J. Morlock enters for Tenora. And B.J., last time we saw him on the mound was at Fairview in a game that lasted about seven hours a couple weeks ago. At least it seemed like it did. We were down to our literally last minute or two of daylight. B.J.'s pitched three innings. That's not allowed to run. That's not allowed to hit. He has struck out five and walked one. So Morlock on a relief of Plasman here in the seventh. First pitch is a ball to Zach Ellers. Morlock pitches from the set position from the first base side of the rubber. Pitches up and in. Ball two. Come back. Ellers with an RBI double in the third. Grounded the short his other two times in the second and fifth. He has one for three with that RBI. Jake Shadle on deck. No, actually, that's going to be Luke Hardy on deck. Little blooper into right field. That's going to drop for a hit in front of Connor Wolfram. No, actually, is that Luke back out there? Number 14, Luke Hardy. Yeah, Connor's still out there. Usually when Eli exits, he comes in the second, but with him throwing 100-some pitches, I don't know if you want him out there with that. So a bloop single for Zach Ellers. It's going to bring up Luke Hardy. First plate appearance for Hardy. Squares around the bunt, bunts through the ball. Mr. Matt Bishop said the boys track team won the Diller over at Ayersville, so congratulations to the boys track team. Nice article in the Crescent News today, by the way, on Jackson Durfee. If you get a chance to pick that up, do so. 0-1 oh, pitch, squared around the button, bumps it right back to Morlock. He does not even look at second, which I don't think he had to play anyways. BJ throws over to first base to boss him one in time to get Shadle, but down to second base on the sacrifice goes Eller, Ellers. 1-3 on the put out for the first out. So Luke Hardy does his job. Advancing the runner to second in the scoring position with one out. So Kel Bickle is going to check in. Kel's your DH. He doubled in the sixth. He has one for three. Runner a second for Napoleon. One out. We are tied at six here in the top of the eighth inning. Outside corner. Strike called. You, on the other hand, have to stand out here. Morlock from the stretch. Long look in. Gets the sign from Dalton Wolfram. Looks back at the runner. 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball. Check swing. Fouled to the backstop. No balls and two strikes. On deck is Owen Espinoza for the Wildcats. Who was your starter. Actually, he pitched really well as well. Ran into a little bit of trouble there in the fifth. But both starting pitchers pitched pretty effectively. The defense definitely let both pitchers down. 0-2 pitch. Morlock steps off. Pitch is low. Nice stop by Wolfram. One ball and two strikes to the number eight hitter, Kel Bickle. These teams waited a whole day to play this game. Might as well go extra innings, right? <laughs> Just not on a Saturday afternoon. 
One, two pitch from BJ to Bickle. Swung on, fouled off third base side, just short of the Rams dugout. Count stays at one and two. Last week, I had to work. I got up at 3.15, did a doubleheader softball game, and went to the reverse raffle. Well, today, same thing, just a single game here, and we have a wedding reception that I'm supposed to be at. <laughs> outside, just missed the outside corner. Wow. Two balls and two strikes to Kel Bickle. <laughs> Go ahead, run down to second for Napoleon. We are tied at six here in the top of the eighth. Morlock in relief of Plasman comes set. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Bickle. Inside ball three, leaned him way back. Right here. Then last Saturday, Mr. Doug Rittenhouse, I can't thank him enough with a nice little speech in my honor at the reverse raffle. So it was rather, rather nice of Doug. It really was. So Doug, if you're listening, which I've told you a thousand times already, I really appreciate that. Warlocks 3-2. Swung on, fouled off. First base side, Bosselman giving chase. Heads down to the Napoleon bullpen where he's going to grab it and throw it back. O'Reilly Riley Peters, yes, my eyes, my other two set of eyes here, say Riley Peters is in right field now because Lord knows without binoculars, I cannot see that far. <laughs> that I assure you. 3-2 coming again. Runner at second. Ellers leads away. Morlocks 3-2 to Bickle. Long set by BJ. Throws, that's low ball four. Bickle trots down the first base with a walk. That's going to put Wildcat runners at first and second. Number nine hitter, Owen Espinoza. Owen Espinoza started, went seven innings on the mound, then went to short once Luke Hardy came in. Walked and scored in the third, grounded to Taron Ward in the fourth, and grounded to Caden Radzik in the sixth. So Wildcats threatening here in this tie game. Runners at first and second. One out. Espinoza digs in. Morlock looks back at the runner at second. Comes to the plate. Ground ball, second base side. Harris up with it. Order Razzik gets short. Relay in time! Oh, baby. Four, six, three on the twin killing. And just like that, the Rams turn a double play to end the Napoleon threat. In the inning for Napoleon, no runs. Yeah, she one hit, no Ram errors, and just one left after the double play. Heading to the bottom of inning number eight here at Drew Field at Sonora High School. We are tied at six on your drop zone, Pizzeria Scorpio. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Back at Tenora High School, bottom of the eighth we go, tied at six. What a heck of an end to that top of the inning. Rams turn a 4-6-3 double play. Caden Radzik came across that bag, hit the bag with his foot, fired over to Bosselman at first, got the runner by a good step and a half, two steps. Nice job by Morlock to get out of the mess. For the Rams, top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. 
Gus Weiler had the bases loaded. We just sent a laser. Bottom part of the inning right at Rubenstein. Moser squares around the bunt. Brings the bat back. That's a ball. Rams with two in the seventh to send it to extras. We have the Bid Like Insurance on the Vets post postgame show coming up. Mosier bunts third base side. It goes foul. Scooped up down there by Parker Woods. Wolf at first, Bossom on the second. Espinosa short, Woods at third. <laughs> Playing four behind the plate. Luke Hardy on the mound. Dietrich, Rubenstein, and Ellers, your outfield left to right for the Cats. 1-1 one, one pitch coming from Hardy to Mosier. Little blooper foul ball just outside the reach of third baseman Parker Woods. It stayed in the air just a split second longer. I think Parker could have snagged it. So the sophomore Mosier digs back in from the left side of the plate. Luke Hardy on in relief. One, two pitch. Luke likes to shake off his catcher quite a bit. His one-two pitch to Mosier, that's way outside. Two balls and two strikes. Although the last time we saw the catcher set up like that wow. and the pitcher hit the glove, it was called a strike. Two-two pitch coming. Hardy again shakes him off. Ford gives him the sign. Two-two pitch. Mosier, this time he drills it. First base side foul. Four Hardys has worked an inning and a third, allowed three hits, two runs, and has walked two, has not struck out anybody. Just the sign, 2-2 two, two pitch coming to Mosier. Little soft liner, second base side. Bosselman scoops it up on the one hop. It comes up on his chest, but he's got plenty of time to recover. Throws out Mosier for out number one. 4-3 on the put out. Caden Radzik steps in. Razzik started the seventh inning, actually flight out to Rubenstein in center. So the Rams rally all came with one out last inning. Hayden did that last year against Antwerp, hit a home run. He has a capability of hitting one. Hardy gets the sign, winds it up. First pitch to Caden, breaking balls. Well, it almost said strike, it looked like a strike. They did not call it a strike. Ball one to Caden. This one, he skies to straightaway center field. Rubenstein underneath it. Now it takes a couple steps back and now puts it away for out. Dalton Wolfram. Number two, F8 on the put out. Bring up Dalton Wolfram. Dalton doubled to start the rally last inning and scored. So the Rams senior catcher steps in from the right side of the plate. Dalton scored three runs. Been on base three times. Breaking ball catches the outside, outside corner. Strike one. Wayne Rams with a big win at Lipsick. 15-0 earlier today. Breaking ball. That's the inside corner. They can't have the inside and the outside corners. Skyly Zolman with a five-inning no-hitter. Skyly struck out 13 of 18 batters he faced. Lady Rams improved to, I believe, 10 and 4 now. 1 and 1, breaking ball. Little squibber off the bat. Hardy off the mound, fields it. Throws out Wolfram for out number 3. Rams go quickly in the 8th for Tenora. No runs, no hits, no Napoleon errors, and nobody left on base. We're going to head to inning number 9 here at Groove Field here at Tenora High School. Tied at 6 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, bring up Brad, 419 
919-481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Top of the ninth inning here at Sonora, tied at six. Six runs, nine hits, five errors for Napoleon. Six runs, eight hits, four errors for the Rams. Both teams scored a run in the first. Napoleon broke open the game with five runs in the third. They took a six to one lead. Rams gradually chipped away. Sonora three in the fifth to cut it to six to four. And the Rams with a two out rally in the bottom of the seventh, tied it. At six on the Alex Shoblin drilled one straight away center field. One hop the wall to tie it at two or tie it at six. Scoring two on the play was Shoblin with a just blazing bat. Number eight, Devin Dietrich. Top of the lineup, one, two, and three to face B.J. Morlock. Morlock starts a second inning of work in relief of Plasma. Dietrich, Rubenstein, and Wolf will face the junior righty, Morlock. First pitch is a ball. I'm going to try for quick and see if I couldn't get the results of the track. I posted the link earlier on all social media. He's your guess for time. He steps out. Dietrich, the leadoff hitter, has been on base with a single in the third and scored a run. Otherwise, he has one for four. Pitch is just a bit. <laughs> this is inside this ball. 2-0 and oh, to count to Devin Dietrich. Pitch is inside. That one's called a strike. Two balls and a one strike, and I think that pitch was worse than the one before. Neat results. Uh, there's no results posted on Miles Split yet. And there's nothing on Bomb's page. Morlock comes set. 2-1 is a strike. Pitch. Two called. Pitch. Morlock has fallen back to even the count at two balls and two strike to Devin Dietrich. Everything's all cleaned up for the way. For those of you from Napoleon, thanks for listening. And if you're watching on Facebook, thank you for watching as well. Morlock comes set. 2-2 two, two to Dietrich. Outside corner. Strike three called. Down goes Dietrich. Right away. Now batting number three, Trey Rubenstein. Trey Rubenstein will step in and Rubenstein been on base three times, scored two runs, and has stolen a base. Got three or two singles and a double for Trey. First pitch outside corner, straight called. Wind now blowing straight away to center field, probably eight to ten miles an hour. It's about 20 mile hours less than it was in innings two, three, and four. That one is a strike called. Pla Plasma. Uh, Morlock quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes. One out. Nobody on here in the top of the ninth inning. Tied at six. 47 degrees now on your current David Weather. Your current David Frank Weather forecast. That pitch way in front of the plate. About a 55-footer for BJ. One ball and two strikes to Trey Rubenstein. Sure. Morlock comes set. One, two, pitch two. Rubenstein just a bit outside. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Blake Wolf awaits on deck, and Blake has been just hotter than a firecracker. Back to face him with two outs and nobody on. Fouled back out of play. Count stays two and two. Oh, way. Roger, thanks for tuning in as always. Roger always tunes in. Girls, boys, you name it. Another longtime watcher, listener, Mr. Roger. 
2-2 pitch inside. He fouls this one back on the third base side. Two balls and two strikes. That remains. I think Bridget's got to go back to Finley tonight. What time you got? <laughs> 9.30. Well, at least she's killing time. <laughs> Probably wanted to get a nap in, but I don't think that's happening either. 2-2 two -two pitch coming. Rubenstein fouls this one off first base side. Trey spraying it all over the place. Tanner graduated last year. Along with Nolan Schaefer. Who are cousins. 2-2 two -two pitch coming from Warlock to Rubenstein. Leans him back. Good miss, good miss. I think Trey's kind of shocked that it didn't hit him. Kind of look like that didn't hit me. Count is full. Morlock from the set. It's payoff pitch coming to Trey Rubenstein. Breaking ball. That goes over the head of Trey. Down the first base he goes. Big turn by Trey. Wolfram had to hustle back to get that wild pitch. It's a ball based on balls. So Rubenstein down the first with one out is the go-ahead run. Candy and chips. Good day to sell hot chocolate here at the Tenora concession stands. Coach Brent Renolette asked for time. He's going to come out and have a conversation with his junior pitcher, Morlock, and his Ram infielders. Two, we are approaching two and a half hours, John says. That's what I said. We, last Thursday when we were at Fairview, that game lasted about three hours. So Tenora's average game time this year is well over two hours. Monday, the Rams will be here. Three home games next year, next year, next week for Tenora. Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday are league games. Saturday, travel to Kaleida to take on the Wildcats. As I said, more than likely, they will not have the seats installed for use. I'm sure, they probably have to get approval and everything before they just open up to the general public. But they're supposed to start seat installation Monday at Kaleida. Looking forward to making a trip down there and seeing the new ballpark. They have turf similar to here. I believe they just have the infield turf down at Kaleida now. So Blake Wolf steps in. Morlock comes set. Rubenstein leads from first. Long look in. Wolf asks for time. Wolf had an RBI single in the first, had an RBI single in the third, struck out in the fourth, and drilled a double in the seventh. Morlock's pitch. That's a shot past the dive of Radzik into left field. Mosier comes in, scoops it up, but not before Rubenstein stops at second, and Blake Wolf is at first. Get back, fellas. So the go-ahead run is at second for Napoleon. Similar situation in the seventh, where Napoleon grounded into a double play to end the threat. Here, same situation. Number four hitter Blaine Ford steps in. Ford 313 coming into the contest. He's 0 for 4. So your number four hitter is 0 for 4, which means he is probably overdue. Morlock and the Rams trying to get out of this pickle here in the top of the ninth, tight at six. Cats have two runners on with one out. Morlock comes set. Harris comes in behind the runner a second. Now he goes back to his position, pitches inside. Ball one. Bye-bye. Supposed to have a What's that? 1-0 pitch from Morlock coming. <laughs> pitch is high, ball two. Blaine Ford going to be looking dead fastball here with a two owl, two balls and no strike count. Great D behind you, five. Great D behind you. Let's go, Green. I'm hitting it. Runners lead from first and second for Napoleon. Morlock comes set. His 2-0 pitch coming to Ford. There goes the runner. Throw down. Goes into left field. Rubenstein gets up. He crosses the plate 
with the go-ahead run. He stole third, or was stealing third. The throw from Wolfram went off the glove of Ward into left field. So Rubenstein scores on, of course, a Rams error. Get it out. Going down to second base was Wolf. Count to Blaine Ford is three balls and no strikes. Or two and one. Two balls, one strike to Blaine Ford. Wolf leads away at second. Morlock comes set. Comes to the plate. That's up and in, ball three. Napoleon dugout has suddenly livened up down there. 7-6, Napoleon leads here in the top of the ninth. Have another runner at second with one out. Morlock comes set. Pitch coming to Ford. That's high, ball four. Hey, that, that's not a bad deal. You're good. So Blaine Ford trots down the first. That's going to put runners at first and second again with one out. Parker Woods will step in, and that's going to be all for B.J. Morlock. Well, the pitching change right after we take this timeout. Wildcats lead 7-6. Have runners at first and second with one out. The new pitcher will be Hunter Bosselman. And we'll be back after we take a timeout here on Tenora Rams Live. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back at Groove Field here at Tenora High School, Wildcats have plated one here in the top of the ninth to grab a 7-6 lead. They're threatening to add more. They have runners at first and second with one out. Parker Woods will be the batter for Napoleon. Hunter Bosselman comes on in relief of B.J. Morlock. Morlock goes from the mound to first base, and Bosselman goes from first base to the mound. Wolfram still behind the plate. Morlock at first. Harris at second. Radzik at short. And Ward at third. Mosier, Gusweiler, and Peters in your Rams outfield. So Bosselman comes on the pitch. Eight in the third innings. It's allowed eight runs, four earned runs. Twelve hits. Walked five. Struck out six. Has an ERA of 3.37. So sophomore righty Hunter Bosselman comes from first base to the mound to try to get out of this jam. Parker Woods steps in for Napoleon. Woods is one for four with a single and a run scored that was in the third inning. While someone looks at the runner, comes set. Pitch to the plate, breaking ball, strike call. Nice breaking ball by Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman gets the sign from Wolfram, looks back at Wolf at second. Comes to the plate, breaking ball, strike two called. Nice breaking ball again by Bosselman. Espinosa and Plasman both had nice breaking balls. Both pitched very well. Plasma went seven innings for the Rams. 0-2 pitch, swung on, grounded, deep in the hole, a short by Radzik. Wolf hits the bag at third. He's going to score the second run in the inning for Napoleon. An RBI single by Parker Woods. Woods was down on the count 0-2. Served that just out of the stretch of Radzik for an RBI single. Stopping at second was Blaine Ford. 
even had Radzik fielded the ball, I don't think he would have had a play. We also do have the meat of our lineup. Well, the point with two here in the ninth to lead eight to six. Nick Eller steps in. First pitch, swung on and missed. Eller's doubled and scored and had an RBI in the third. Had a single in the seventh. He is two for four with that one RBI. Pitch is high. Count evens, one ball, one strike, one out. Cats have runners at first and second. Plasman started, went seven innings, allowed nine hits. Six runs, four earned runs, walked one, struck out one. And for Napoleon, Espinoza started. Pitch breaking ball, strike two. Owen pitched five and two thirds, allowed five hits, four runs, no earned runs, struck out six Rams and walked one. Luke Hardy has been on relief, pitched two and a third. Innings of relief, three hits, two runs, and his walk to one two pitch outside. Nice stop by nice Dalton Wolfram. Nice job. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Way to work, kid. Thanks everybody for staying with us. 336 was the first pitch time. David Frank weather temperature was 52 at that time. I assure you it was not, did not feel 52. Temperature is all the way down to 45 now. Check swing, that's strike three. Bosselman strikes out Ellers for out number two. Two, fellas. He didn't appeal. He swung at it. Jacob Shadle, or no, actually, Shadle is, was pinch hit for last inning by Luke Hardy. So Luke Hardy will be his second plate appearance sacrificed in the seventh to get the runner down to second. So Hardy in the seventh position is on the mound for the Wildcats. Wildcats lead eight to six here in the ninth inning. Time called. Harding steps out. Possible was ready. A little late, little late. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Not who said that down there in the, in the right below us, but that's a very accurate. Pitch inside, fouled back. Strike one. Keep it there, Dalton. One pitch coming from Bosselman. Cats lead away from first and second. Long look in. Bosselman gets the sign, looks back at the runner at second. Comes set. Comes to the plate. Ground ball. Second base side. Harris over to Radzik for the force out for out number three. Harris had a little bit of trouble getting the ball out of his glove. Finally did. 4-6 on that put out. Napoleon with some damage here in the ninth inning. They get two runs to go ahead, eight to six, and they did so on two base hits. No Ram errors, and the Cats will leave two. Bottom of the ninth inning, coming up. We're gonna have a new pitcher, says John. We'll get you that information right after this from one of our fantastic sponsors. Eight to six on your Drop Zone Pizzeria as we head to the bottom of inning number nine here at Groove Field at Tenor High School. Van Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Van Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Van Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Back at Sonora High School, Groove Field, new pitcher, Blake Wolf will come on and work the bottom of the ninth inning for the Wildcats. Wolf started it short, 
moved over to first when Espinosa exited. So for the numbers for Blake Wolf, he is two and one on the season ERA of 2.47. He's pitched 22 and two thirds innings. It's allowed 23 hits. It's allowed 18 runs, eight earned runs. Struck out 21 and walked eight. So the Rams have their work cut out for them here, trailing by two in the bottom of the ninth inning. Ward, Shoblin, and Harris will face Wolf. Hardy moves from the mound to first base for Napoleon. Wolf gets the sign. First pitch coming to Ward. That's outside corner. Strike called. Wolf, three-sport athlete for Napoleon, had a heck of a basketball season. As we saw over at Napoleon this year, Ward swings and misses, strike two. Ward, two singles in a walk. Had a huge single in that, and a run scored in that seventh inning. The Rams tied it at six in the seventh with those two runs. You're welcome, Roger. Appreciate you and Mr. Plasman. Doug on his way back in Cincinnati, he says, listening in on his radio. One, two pitch outside. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. Doug's like, I'm sorry I made you late for the wedding. Well, that's all right. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Wolf gets the sign from Ford. Swung on and missed. Down goes Ward. Route number one. Alex Shawboy. Don't worry. The Rams started their rally in the seventh with one out. Shoblin with that huge double in the seventh. One hop. The center field fence drilled it over the head of Rubenstein. Wolf's pitch is outside. Ball one. Again, the Lady Rams with the win. 15 nothing. Over Lipsick. Shoblin drills it in to left field. It's right in front of Devin Dietrich. So Shoblin, as we said, Rams with a one out rally in the seventh to tie it. Shoblin stops at first. Luke Harris. Harris going to step in. Harris walked in that seventh inning. So Luke is 0 for 3 with a walk. Shoblin on at first. He is going nowhere. Not trailing by two and one out. Yeah, down the third base line. Try this to is a pass ball, of course. He'll be moving, but outside of that, it's not going anywhere. First pitch to Harris. Is a ball. Okay. Rams eight and two. Napoleon seven four and one. <laughs> Tied Wasion at two. Pitch is a strike. One ball and one strike. Is either one of those where they started the game and it rained. <laughs> Or the game got called because of darkness. So I can probably look. Got their game changer up. Just need to find it. Pitch fouled off first base side. Count to Harris goes down to one ball and two strikes. So that game went to the ninth inning. Or went nine innings. That game versus Wasion back on March 30th started at five. So obviously it ended due to darkness. One, two pitch, swung on, just got a piece of it, Harris did, tapped it to the backstop. Wolf trying to get the save, on in relief, he's the third pitcher to work for the Wildcats. Espinosa started, Hardy came on in relief, and Wolf trying to get the three out save here in the bottom of the ninth inning. 8-6, Cats lead by two, Rams have a runner at first. Harris swings and misses, first base is occupied, so he couldn't run regardless. Number 19, the Rams down to their final out. Hunter Bosselman steps in. Wind blowing out still, just not as forcefully as it was earlier. Wolf. Come set. His pitch is low. Whoa, we caught the oh, umpire says I gotta get to jerseys because I'm starving. And that is a strike on the low outside corner. <laughs> Wolf's 0 1. 
That one's definitely a ball. It's going to be in the same spot as the previous pitch. One ball, one strike, two outs. Point with a 8-6 lead here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Wolf comes set, his 1-1. One, one. Check swing. Umpire says you went too far. That's strike two on Hunter. So Rams and Boston went down to their final strike. Off your shoulder! Someone takes one. Yeah, we're not whining about it, though. Long look in from Hardy. Shakes off Ford. Gets the sign he wants. One, two, pitch coming to Bosselman. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Bosselman. Down go the Rams. In the inning for Tenora. No runs, one hit, no errors. The Rams leave one final from Tenora High School. It is Napoleon eight and Tenora six. Rams fall to eight and three. Napoleon improves to eight, four, and one. We'll be back here Monday. Thanks for coming. For a non-league game here. Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday will be your home games. Make sure you get out here and support the Rams. Coming up, we'll have a brief Midlake and Insurance Investment Folk Game Show, and we'll do it right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning.